presented uh, presenting status. Yeah. I think, can you, uh, can you see my screen now? Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. So, yeah, so, one second. So can you see? Yeah, okay, sorry, there are some logistics issues here, but uh, let me get back to this. Actually, this was the project. I'll put it in screen share. And hope, hope you all can see it. Can you can you see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, I think uh, last year, sometime, uh, sometime around March, April. We were looking at um, uh, not we uh, actually HHS and Oracle partnered uh, and uh, thought of um, developing a good solution that would help um, track the test results or help track some of the COVID uh, related issues that the government is having. So at last we come we talked to the HHS team who were who were in the leadership role last year. And we went through a few iterations of different types of use cases that are there and um, and the technologies that were available at that time. And also um, looked at uh, various uh, cloud infrastructures that we had. So finally, um, we ended up, um, as, as it was the COVID time <laughs> during March of last year, we looked at it and said that, okay, let's build a um, proof of concept to track the uh, submission of the results of the COVID patients who were there. Um, first started with um, one of the simplest things to from HHS and CDC to take the existing or defined schema model of what we have, uh, what, or which is called the implementation spec provided by HHS. And um, we took that first and saw, okay, who will be, um, let's let's try and see what is the best technology available and what would be what would, what would fit into the uh, into the cloud infrastructure that uh, Oracle has with the government when we picked the Oracle cloud infrastructure and selected uh, blockchain you uh, would definitely um, enhance or use that uh, could be used for this use case to progress faster and track these results and get it get it on to different departments or different states um, at that time for at the time for the COVID result submission. So we first started with HHS as one blockchain node and the other one was CDC. And uh, later basic, basically HHS um, communicated or, or got into um, got Abbott Lab into Abbott Labs into the picture. And we started defining how we can integrate uh, um, their their test results, what like by next now, which is being used, and they can submit the results tracked by the patients directly from from their from from their sources that are there from their uh, IT and to into HHS um, blockchain network. So then uh, that's where that's when this project started. The purpose of this is to just make sure that uh, we, tag, we, we take the results of the patient belonging to a specific organization or a provider or, or other healthcare facilities and see uh, some, uh, and ask them to publish their results um, onto their corresponding nodes. When I talk about a node, when I say a node, probably you can think logically it is a participant or a company or, or a physician um, provided hospital. Which can which can just set up a node in a matter of minutes, either on Oracle Cloud or or their on-prem infrastructure, um, and then uh, start to send their results through uh, through their nodes to submit their results through that, and it can be viewed upon by the HHS organization or the CDC organization to go and capture the results and and do some due diligence to make sure they are available for all of the groups to, to, to at least identify what can be done from the perspective of vaccines or something else, some other analytics that they can they can go and predict those though. So that is the purpose of this project. The initial demo and premise from I started with simple one node, one CDC, node, lab, CDC node and the lab node 
um, which we define starting with ABC, then later, as soon as uh, Abbott came into play, we, we, we just went on with Abbott and started working with them to define this. So the key pieces of the solution, um, I'm just talking about, till now I just talked about the business purpose of it. Here in this blockchain, how are we going to use, um, use the things that are available to speed up the process of capturing the lab results, right? The first thing is we provided an API which we defined for the lab spec implementations, which is on uh, governance website. Um, so this is defined by HHS as a whole for all the organizations to submit based on the labs, tests, patients, and everything. Once, uh, once, once we once we publish the API, what what they what it does is um, it is published to the organization that is a need a need of to, that, that, that is there to submit their healthcare records to, um, of the patients, which is mostly encrypted through the uh, to end to end, and that are sent to uh, sent to who the, sent from their node to HHS, which is replicated, which is replicated across all the blockchain nodes. Once the HHS gets the data from any of the healthcare providers, um, Oracle has capabilities in the blockchain platform that is integrated. You can take the records uh, from a corresponding participant or a node and um, basically take, capture the history of all the transactions that are performed from a specific date to a date, or you can do all sorts of uh, uh, data mapping and analytics per, based on what is needed for real-time visual, visualization from the perspective of the government. So what is under the hood, basically, as I talked about, it has blockchain instances. When I say instances, it's uh, it's a physical infrastructure node tied to a participant, which is it can be either it can be a, a lab, any lab or healthcare pro, healthcare provider. Those are called instances. Inter instance is an infrastructure piece of it. A network is a combination of all these participating together to share that data across to different organizations. Basically, all these need to perform a specific set of and follow a specific set of rules to submit. And all of the data, probably you can, the folks who are there on this can be viewed, who are, who are there on the blockchain network can view just the transaction count and a specific set of uh, public information, not the inventor information that is there on, on the network itself, based on the privileges. So this is the whole um, infrastructure that we provide at first starting with Oracle Cloud, providing them the API, providing the instances on the blockchain. And um, in case if they need any analytics or DB capabilities, we provide them with that for the data that has been submitted by them. Um, so um, we, th at the th as is the second part of it, we also included other government agencies like CDC. And we, we had a provision to just see if there are any other state labs that had or any community health centers that uh, that came in forward to submit the data. So it will be easy for them to Easy, easy for the government to capture all the results and, and predict certain mass as a certain KPIs for the information, and also use the data for some some other uh, some other use cases to capture like the vaccination and tracking, etc. Um, we uh, labs and other reporting locations, aggregate test kits and manufacturers can also use this network. So in this diagram, what you're looking at is Abbott, which I just talked about, is already there, which is in production from last, I mean, probably in a year, at least from from uh, from the time we started. We have HHS, we had CDC. All these three are already there. The other nodes we just projected, thought it, thinking that it is a starting step towards the uh, towards submitting, opening it up for all the other participants who are willing to have share, share their data in this case. Um, so um, we had a cross network sharing using labs and health networks. We we worked with the teams. It's not like um, just going and publishing our API or probably a endpoint saying that go and publish your results. But there is a lot of infrastructure or setup needed. Like we have different products like Gateway to track and everything, which we which we uh, evolved in time um, from the day we started this project. So. Right now, we have uh, specific uh, labs that are there. We track them, and um, uh, some, uh, a few of them I can name it. I think like like Q Health and others were already participating in this and uh, submitting the data through a specific interface that we provided based on based on the requirements. Though, now 
Uh, all the others are pretty straightforward from there. It is just the screenshots which we took. And this is one of the user interfaces uh, that we built for uh, just a sample to show that um, using the API, you can build any sort of UIs. But this uses a lot of uh, encryption and everything uh, from the state to demonstrate it to the uh, to the participants over there. But not all these data would be would be seen or visible to the participants who doesn't have access in this case, though. Um, we provide multiple interfaces. One is through the UI, go and load your Excel with the data. And the other one is having a batch submitted um, by any provider by the end of the day. In a, in a specific format, and uh, either it can be HL7 or or a JSON format, or whichever format is uh, is agreed upon um, by the HIPAA regulation in this case. And we took all those and uh, sent it to send, uh, send uh, submitted the records though with the provide the API interfaces for them. Similarly, uh, this is the timeline view of records, but um, here we have different types of tests, which is positive and negative, negative showing um, demonstrating uh, each. Uh, each test at a different diagnostic center or name. So this is just a view of how you can look at uh, from from the perspective of the virus and the uh, and the organizations that are participating. You can view the timeline view, and similarly, all of these charts which you're looking at are based on the data. You can see it's last year somewhere, um, based on the data that has been live uh, that has been captured on the blockchain system, which has been taken in which has been captured on oracle db as part of the oracle infrastructure in this case and then uh, using analytics use oracle analytics to come up with this uh, um, these these charts or kpi metrics that were it's not a one day job it's just a matter of how you're going to look at it because there are multiple components involved in each of this and the significant effort of different teams and groups who worked on this um well, like agenda one for one person being from the business side of it and there are so many other technical infrastructure cloud groups that we work on. It's not just my presentation. I don't take the credit for all these, but uh, that's uh, that's this is just the end goal of what uh, what the solution looked like, though. So this is the geographic view, just to show you all these views and um, different views recorded by state. You see, where this is just this is just the POC which we did way back. But now is it working? They have many more which I can walk you through too. But uh, it can it can predict um, it's a radar view of the test record submitted by each state in this case, and this is based on the positivity rate on the state. We we took very minimal set for the for the proof of concept, and finally this is the results view or, or generated forecast forecasting based on success results uh, forecasting what would happen next two months or three months, um, and all heat map states and this is. Now, uh, I will just browse into the blockchain platform as part of the Zepindex. Basically, till now, I showed you the end result. The, this is the view of how you can view, uh, you can see a participant node, which is which in this case is Oracle uh, blockchain platform, which is run, the infrastructure node is on HHS in this case. And this is just a um, pictorial view, but it is exactly similar to what we have on live too. So you can see the number of blocks that have been added uh, from the last week or block this as for the POC. And similarly, you can see the commits and endorsements that are made. Um, current infrastructure, we can walk you through, but I think it is, I need to log into through the VPN and show it. Though. So this is how an organization would communicate. It's a network topology here. Only we have two of them. But um, as I showed in the previous first uh, business diagram, you can you can clearly see that there are the multiple peak participants that are used here. So this one is a clear vision of view of what uh, the the other picture that is shown in the mind map is uh, shown. So when we are looking at this, this is just a technical view based on what we configured. And uh, finally, this is the channel saying that code channel, and we are looking looking at recording all these ledger uh, ledgers and the participating labs that are there here, or and how would the transaction look like is what is shown in this, which is all probably encrypted. And what is there inside the block, you can you, you can just go and view through the Explorer because it's totally integrated with our auto blockchain platform. I'll stop here. <laughs> These are all other other things that are blockchain technology background. So any any questions in this case? So yeah, well, I had a question. Can you hear me? Yeah, sure. I can't hear you. 
when you built the blockchain, did you did you uh, technically put it at the middleware application, or did you do a private network yeah. build that had an API touch to touch integration? Yeah, so good question. I, I don't know who the gentleman is. I'm not looking at the participant, but let me go through uh, and to answer your question in one liner. Uh, it is not the middleware for sure. What we did is we set up the private net because Oracle doesn't participate in or have any products related to public net in this case. Um, we are mostly <laughs> enterprise based and uh, that's what we do and mostly focusing on uh, industrial use cases of the uh, of the government use cases in this case but um, we as you said it, it is not it is it is not middleware it is just the end result and where we have multiple components we can trying to show like the api gateway object storage and also uh, some sort of functions that are written uh, uh, as part of the gateway processing for batch for batching so and well, you were you able to show the immutable concept and the provenance of the blockchain so that you could persist on an audit all the attributes of the discrete data points? Um, yes, um, because there are specific uh, limitations from the customer or from the HHS or government labs. What we do is we encrypt all, we encrypt and do all sorts, all, all, all the um encrypt and encode in before we submit the transaction into the blockchain ledger for government what the government does is when i say government i, I mean hhs and cdc hhs does is they have we implemented the uh, analytics of the database analytics platform uh, on top of what records we store on blockchain we have a feature that that you can configure to replicate those in there not the private data but the data just related to the public information, like a like a name and uh, name of the test and state, and uh, mm -hmm. the, the zip code, few of them which are which are available or open to um, to to the government to do certain things. That's what we did. All the other encryption and te and the tests we we ran on the infrastructure and this solution, and um, this has been approved. When I say not approved, it has been through all the testing levels of the gum from the government perspective from the cloud perspective government cloud perspective too thank you i'm trying to show you where i can show you a figure of three one second i'll show you but in the meanwhile i can answer sure I, I had a question as well uh you mentioned it's a private blockchain uh enterprise blockchain i also noted that yes. some of the people on the blockchain network were not government entities in a lot of cases like when we have uh applications that are hosted in the cloud uh outside of our enterprise cloud there's like a government only cloud mm -hmm. is 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 the uh, private blockchain permissioned or separated in some way that um th that accounts for that yes yeah, so um normally we have two versions of cloud okay one is commercial version and the other one is the pure FedRAMP certified cloud version, which which Oracle has, in uh, in different. I think it's in Langley for this for this purpose. Um, the the answer to your question is all the components that are there on on this cloud, which is the. I hope I can give me one second. Let me see if I can have. So it will be similar to the public version of it. This is the public version of the cloud which you're seeing. But this is there's most of uh, you can see the zones and everything here, what we what are available. But for a private version, there's more secure and which is certified. We have different um, views and different services in this case. And as you asked, how are the private organizations participating in this? So what we do is we offer multiple things for them. One is one is called an enterprise edition, which is uh, it's it, I'm, I'm talking about the software here. I'm not talking about business or anything in this case. Okay, so um, different versions of uh, blockchain platform that can be installed either there on prem or on any of the trusted infrastructure that they have. It, it can be anything. It can you can think about any. Uh, I don't know whether Amazon has uh, um, private private sector cloud, but I'm just saying any cloud. We can take the software and make sure that it is uh, um, it is deployed in there. So, 
and the way the transaction encryption and everything are held are the things that are defined on by the cloud security folks in the fed ramp from the federal cloud that we follow all their all their security mechanisms that they're using as it's dow cloud and it is very secure in this case did i answer your question perfectly thank you yeah now so, yeah go ahead yeah bola jeff here um so you're saying uh, i know this is government um sanctioned and stuff but if you should get into the private sector are you saying that there are protocols and stuff they'll have to follow in order to be considered to add to the chain um and the way the way this uh, network is set up is you see this cloud console and i'm just showing you the commercial version of it this is my test instance i didn't do anything i was just doing some proof of concept or something else so what happens here is if if it is government most of the government most of the folks the government uh, related blockchain implementation or any solution implementations right um they they go through a specific vetting process of the software which which is totally separate now whether any private organization participating in this network how can they participate right there's a onboarding process that we offer or, or a document that we have defined which which need to be filled up by the provider or, or the other participant and um, once fill, after filling that we go through a process telling helping them out either they can be on oracle blockchain platform or any platform that is supported by uh, that, that uses hyperledger now the question comes back to what is the protocol and everything that is used hyperledger internally uses basically you know, the, the communication between these uh, um, these components go through a pro protocol called grpcs and they go through a secure tunnel on on this grpcs through 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 a secure tunnel of all the cloud verification uh, things that are done and then they communicate with each other we determine whether their infrastructure is provide infrastructure that the participant has has the capability to support this then we go ahead with that there's a processing onboarding process from the business side of it there's other way that you can look at it as from the technical side of it um what type of infrastructure else do you use so those are different two different aspects of those though thank you i think this is a this is just an example but I'll, i'm trying to show how the platforms would look like when when you were asking how would the participants i'm just giving you these this is my test org okay don't, don't uh, whatever i do i just put it as uh, um, prod and just test it out but uh, this is just an example of how your network would have looked when the people had multiple participants but at the same time here the data is not encrypted and this is not a and this is not a, a hip certified application or so but this is more of a, this is more of an application that i built for just demoing purposes so if you're looking at this one right i'm just trying to show you what does the founder look like the nomenclature probably and the mind map of who are the participants there are three participants here i'm just showing you three participants that are there um uh, i'm trying to see if i can minimize this but you can see there are three participants and they have their own node. And similarly, if you're looking at what are the components that are involved, I don't want to bore you with the technical stuff, but these are the comp components that are involved in the blockchain platform itself, which you're not going to go and, as a business user, I don't think you're going to go and uh, use it. But if you're a technical person, basically what this is, is we are only looking at these two pieces, peer zero and peer one, which are infrastructure nodes, which has, all the blocks that are recorded so let me show you how a block would look inter from internally uh, internally and externally so which is and if you can yeah so i just pick one right there any transactions i think this might have one so so once this is up, it shows you different pieces of info when the transactions. A block can have multiple transactions. As you can see, there are like 142 blocks which were tested way back in July 25th. 
but let me go through a specific data that you will know in the inside a block there is a transaction or multiple transactions it would be like this actually that this is just a demo as i said that's nothing is encrypted and so this is just thinking about how a pro pro production order is shipped or a purchase order number is shipped to a, to a dhl from some other manufacturing company this is an argument that we process similarly there is a step uh, each step that we can track like uh, i'm placing an order uh, this is inside a block this is only being visible from you from from the console but normally if you want to do it you need to go inside the spear which i just showed you in the beginning and go through and do some command line stuff and you still won't get the pure clean thing but you'll just get the block information etc in this case though this is a view of uh, how a block will consist of a transaction in this case and uh, that's what you're looking at and there's a thing called when i said that we validate certain things and we have some implementation spec right those are all the things that we write in a business contract or a smart contract or whatever name you can give it smart contract chain code all go with the same thing if you're looking at it from the public ledger perspective they can be written in different languages like solidity and java and other things but we support multiple we meaning uh, this platform supports uh, go node and other java platform to write your smart contracts based on your business requirement um now it's you can play with it this is all open and free for a month if you want to go and log in and do it but the key the key thing that i want to focus here on this is if, uh, the first gentleman i don't remember the name but we were asked right what we used uh, for the infrastructure how it looks like and this is the, the the whole process is this is how we we use multiple components hoping hope it comes back so we get an authorizer and we have all these nodes in audit log and this is in government cloud okay nothing it's all have written specifically for government and once you go and look at the oci event we capture the file process the file load it and um, then finally after the encryption we send it to the blockchain if there is a failure we go and send it back and write to the payload this needs to be set up for every partner that's the onboarding process which i was talking about i don't i don't i don't we are not going to change any of these written ones but at least from the authorization and authorizer perspective we at least need to vet some things from the government perspective and for us so that's what we do in this case um the streaming module that has been used you can see that here and file receiving module and object storage module that are also there um that's the one from but we also you as i said how is the data replicated from this to blockchain so what we do is we offer a configure rich history which means that any data that has been sent to the blockchain network has a, a copy of it inside the um, can be replicated inside the network when i say copy that has been replicated i'm talking about the transaction data only um which which can be encrypted or uh, whatever you want to it will be encrypted which will be replicated onto this database and from there we use our analytics engine on on, on either on cloud or on prem to generate the heat maps which i was just showing you in the beginning though so which is all of these which we which you just saw so our as i said again our focus is mainly on enterprise and government related um uh, from the government sector these are the ones only these are the only ones which we work through in most of our cases and uh, we don't we're not working with any bitcoin or anything uh, on at this point with uh, which is public blockchain related so questions uh, well i have a question can you hear me yeah yeah i can hear you I think I think one of the things for the audience that would be important also for you to articulate it's it's rare, it's rare to have an architect and a developer on one of these calls but you know, it's really good to see you on this call because you're able to speak to some of the additive values of the blockchain as you know blockchain um, has a considerable amount of promise with with regards to interoperability because you get a single source of truth that's in immut immut there's has you know immutability it yeah. has provenance it has persistence there's a lot of technical values informatically speaking why blockchains are so good at what they do yeah but we I weren't mean. we're in about a four to five year development cycle when when this you know hard blockchain 
can you speak a little bit about what you think the blockchain can do that mm -hmm. other technologies simply won't be able to do just merely because of the computation, mathematical, cryptographic hashing that are part of its architecture? Because that's one of the things that people oftentimes don't understand from an interoperability perspective. So, and because you did that, that's what you were doing with the HHS project. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you had a single source of truth that could not be tampered, that was fail proof. There were a lot of things that I remember when Jose Arita presented to mm -hmm. us that, that nobody else could do. Right. Think, can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think this group yeah. needs to understand that blockchain is not a technology that's going to go away anytime soon. Right. Oracle, IBM, you know, you name it, the biggest vendors in, in the... Yep. Yeah. yeah, sure. Let me go through that. So, um, uh, hope. I'll put, I'll leave it like this because if I do it, I don't know the which slide I'm covering. If you're not clear, let me know. But this is this is the slide I got. We took it from some source, probably around five, six years, for I think 2016, 17 time frame. So not everything would fit in in the blockchain bucket. Okay, it's not AI. Just to, it's it's a funny cartoon type of a thing here. But let me um, walk you through. Um, what these two are at a very high level from the blockchain perspective, right? So uh, the concepts which you, which uh, I think uh, you brought out. So there are two types of blockchain. One is a public, which is like uh, you talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and that is the public version of the blockchain where you go and um, where you go and uh, submit your block, uh, submit your transaction, and it can be viewed across by multiple parties or who just have an ID can go and view it. For example, in this case, I'll just go and I'll show you one in like Bitcoin Explorer in case you, if you're, if you didn't go through it, everybody can see all the transactions because it's a public net in this scenario. So if you're looking at this, right, you're seeing today at the current blocks, which you're having here, these are all the blocks. One block was the block height is 70,000, which means that the number of blocks submitted today, uh, submitted lately are the high the number of blocks are 703,713 and who's the miner you can see the identities anonymous identities here this is called public net which means bitcoin or ethereum they will have different uh, things in this in this case so this is ethereum which i'm just showing you okay and how would a transaction look like and what is a miner and a mine thing and that is those are the concepts that, that are different from the perspective of uh, of a public blockchain versus a private blockchain. In this case, um, I showed you the block and the inside info. This is what that is, which mean, which is similar to what I walked you through in, in here, like going and showing you the transactions, um, which is there, which showed you the shipment and everything. That is nothing, but that is exactly this info which you're looking at, the block hash, and which we made it easier from the public perspective. I'm just waiting it to load, but. Uh, um, you will see the hash as a transaction is submitted. You will not be able to see anything that um, that that you need from the private enterprise. As this is public, you're seeing the hash, and it is encrypted uh, at the block level, at the file system level, uh, from the infrastructure perspective as well as the middleware perspective. Whatever uh, the way, all these can be all these can be uh, secured and protected um, across across different participants. Now. Come, going back to, I'm just showing you what is public. This is Ethereum, what you're looking at. Any transaction you do on Ethereum will be, can be viewed by any, anyone, but based on an anonymous ID, which you have in here, which I just walked you through in the beginning. So what these guys, what, what happens is a number of, a transaction comes in as an overview. Um, when I submit a transaction saying that I'm going to buy um, some, some 10 Ethereum coins or so, what happens here is first a miner or a mine, the first is it is sent to this network and a transaction is recorded. And the number of, there will be a large number of participants who will be there. Every person is a participant in this case. They go and take that, um, the transaction and probably decode, or when I say decode, run the consensus algorithm on their machines or in a blockchain farm to break the transaction until they get a 51% of participants who approve this transaction or break this mine transaction, uh, nothing would be submitted to the ledger. The ones which you're seeing are the submitted transaction. 
So the algorithm consensus and the puzzle, what you're going to play, are mainly defined by the consensus mechanism or the network that is there. Whereas in a permission ledger, which is which is what I, I was showing in the in this deck, they have we have a closed ecosystem of members. Like no, it's not like everybody can come and join into this. They just we need to ask the participant or organizations to join in this, and then um, the, it'll become that the participant will be a legal guy have providing having their own certificates. They will be providing their own infrastructure details, everything into this, and they can they will be submitting the transaction and the fan, the put protocols that are used are totally different from the ones which are which are here. It doesn't mean that one is secure versus another. But scalability matters in in the enterprise version versus the public. So that's why most of the enter public blockchains are, are are very slow when compared to the enterprise versions in here. And a um, few of the products that you're seeing here are enterprises, like um, these are the things that are there. These are six years back slides. Okay, no, five year back slides. Don't uh, quote me if the companies are gone now. But um, what we use here uh, in this permission space is this. Um, and if you want the public, all of these are the public block products blockchain, which mostly focus on crypto market. Um, we mostly focus on enterprise wide solutions. So now the basics as, uh, as you asked, so what it starts with first thing is, is, a, um, is, a, is a transaction. Basically it all starts with an organization having a, um, organization having a node. Node meaning an infrastructure setup. I think this is from Hyperledger. I didn't create this, but this is a general concept for every most of the blockchains in this case. So all all the peers, all the logical participants participate in network and communicate through a thing. You can see the dotted lines here. These are called uh, these are called channels. Now, once let's say that there are five participants, I submit a transaction, and you define as you you, def, you write a business rule. Um, for any transaction that comes onto this network, um, it needs to be approved by a few people in your private network who need to who need to approve it. You can define that criteria, and it goes to to the, the it goes through the smart contract or the logic of the code, and uh, that is invoked from your UI or uh, application, and the transaction is validated and said, okay, this is good. Now. It will be sent back to, to the main main participants. Uh, when once the endorsements are done, it will be sent to all the participants on the blockchain network. This is the main execution. So there is no when I say mining and everything, which is, is there in the public uh, public concept. Here there is a mining that that uh, that is correlated to what the consensus does in this case, which is a bit different in this scenario. That is the key part of public and private, and uh, when you look at it. Once the transaction is done, let's say a block, it's now it's 10, it is updated to 100, that transaction is added to the blockchain network. So how will the blocks start with as, uh, it's each block is a fingerprint of the previous block. It can get, get, it can be traced up to the zero block, which is called Genesis. All of these blocks are persisted blocks on the disk, communicated results on, to the network are single uh, are signed results by the participants which are which are primarily focused on how this uh, how we approve the transaction and uh, you see this block here uh, this is how a transaction is recorded inside a block a hash and a transaction a hash would be recorded and if you click on this which which you will not but inside inside the network it is a hash. Nobody will see anything because it's made up of series of transactions, which is are, which are totally encrypted, and you can at least just see some additional uh, some metadata in this case. And none of the transactions, when once submitted, can be uh, can can be deleted or thing. You're going to add up on top of it. That's what this is. So you can get the immutability. Any transaction can uh, submitted to the blockchain is immutable. And it is considered a single source of truth with all the trusted mechanisms that are used in the consensus mechanism, and also, uh, and and also it provides a lot of trans, which I will go through. But this is a block how it looks like. Once you're doing that, it goes and um, submits the data to all the parties on the network, 
based on the configuration of the channel. Um, I, I don't want to go and I, I already showed this slide how this uh, developer looks at it, but uh, from the technology standpoint, what happens is a transaction comes in from the UI or API, it goes to the smart contract and it gets it goes and gets into the world state ledger and the blocks are getting built and saved there. So world state is nothing but a tiny, think about it as a key value pair data store and it maintains the current state of the transaction in there. Whereas blocks are the physical data which is encrypted and totally set up in this scenario. You can, all of these, well, when I say what are those are already mentioned here, you need an infrastructure, you need smart contracts, you need applications to deal with this. And now there are different algorithms, um, public, private, I just address four or five of them here, but they, they are continuously evolving, right? What we used currently is a raft uh, kind of crash fault tolerant protocol. Um, that is more of an algorithm, consensus algorithm that we use in this case. Um, um, I'll, I'll talk about the uh, demands, but let me show you the key, what are the key things that blockchain is looked at for. So, um, as I said, how does a blockchain work? Shit. The key problem today is, let's say there are five parties in this whole thing, right? What happens now? is you maintain the records that need to be communicated with in silos. You have your own integration systems. You have your own, own, own uh, uh, module that you integrate with. And then you need to give access to the other participant to come and look at it. It, it, is, it is sometimes, uh, for some cases, it is feasible. But uh, most of it, if you think about it from a, from a perspective of a transaction in this case let's say the health records from from hss or think about a purchase order between walmart or uh, hp and uh, fedex shipment for the same purchase order think about all of these participants are looking at the same purchase order that has been shipped or not right this is an example in the same case with from banking fintech systems too so all these participants if they agree upon a specific set of rules and say that we can we can benefit out and reduce the third party intermediaries and have tracking and uh, transparency um, very very, uh, very visual across all these. This will be a, a, a win win situation for all the participants, reducing reducing the inefficiency and expensiveness that that we have created today. So it's not a rip, uh, it is not a, a replacement for a database. I'm not saying that. Neither it is replacement for any integration system. It's just a matter of how you look at the business from a from from a different perspective. Now, the key values are characteristics. Why 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 this is a disruptive check technology and it won't go. Um, if you look at database or other things, this is more that's more of centralized system, right? There's no central or controlling authority in uh, uh, there's a controlling authority and central system that is there. Whereas in this case. It is more eliminating the intermediaries to reduce the transaction cost and near real-time execution. All the parties in this scenario where, which belong to the same mindset or same use case um, have the same distributed ledger. And the transaction history is immutable and um, it increases the confidence for, um, for fraud opportunities in this case. Similarly, smart contracts which are defined by the participants and smart con the business rules are followed across by all the participants who are there in the network so and um, the transparency which you can see it's in, it, it provides increased audibility aud auditability let's say that i'm submitting some transactions onto the ledger if somebody wants to go and audit right i just can spin up a simple instance and say that hey you're a reviewer on this you can just go and audit it at this uh, audit this by looking at the data that that was submitted for for any number of years which re reduces the cost for fraud and audits in this scenario Similarly, there are different industries uses in a different way. Okay, I just showed you one of a few of them here. This is very minimal. This is again not from Oracle or this is from Internet again. And um, here are a few of the old customer initiatives we used to do. But this slide is updated, and we have like like four five hundred. I think I can. I don't, I don't know whether that slide. This is like five years back, four years back slide. So you can see from financial services, supply chain, public sector, healthcare. These are few core industries that we that we normally work on, but there are others too. It's like a bio, biotech for clinical supply, uh, clinical trials and all these that are much prevalent in this too. 
No, um, I think again, what Oracle does is gives you a platform with added added capabilities and the technology as uh, was it talked about? It doesn't go away. I don't think uh, this is going to be. It, it can be replaced by anything, but at least if used efficient, if if used due diligently based on the use case, it is clear most of the times uh, this will prove very effective and efficient and reduce the costs over time and reduce the processing time and engineering time in certain certain scenarios too. So. And I didn't talk about the security and aspects, which are which are much better than the other um, other distributed technologies that are there in this case. Though I'll stop you. It's like I have twelve more minutes, but I can go and go. Hey, thanks, Bella. <clears throat> this was uh, incredible, and I'm I'm glad, I'm very happy that we were able to uh, schedule a block of time that allowed you to take some Q&A, go into a bit more detail um, about blockchain in healthcare and about the project that uh, you guys, have, you folks have done work on. Mm -hmm. uh, does anyone have any questions for Bala or uh, any points they'd like to make with regards to this stuff uh, for the group before we call this meeting a little bit early? Oh, slides. Bala, how do you feel about sharing your slides? Yeah, yeah I will. So the thing is, the one word I have, uh, I think, uh, uh, Jindi helped me out. I can share these, right? The one with HHS. Is that fine? Absolutely. No problem at all, Bala. Yeah. So, I think yeah, I can share. Bala, yeah. Bala, I was going to say that you also yeah. left out one of the most important deliverables that Jose Arrieta um, was able to demonstrate. He had an annual savings of $25 million per year on right. smart contracts. You need to speak about that because people think that this is, in, the cost benefit analysis was confirmed by HHS. So maybe you can touch a little bit about that as well yeah. as we close this because yep, yep. That, that is a point that, that cannot be just glossed over. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, um, uh, the, for HHS, I'll just talk about um, mainly there was a big cost benefit. The reason being having and going and setting up all these nodes and uh, all these systems working in silos. Let's think about the state labs. Let's think about the other healthcare providers. They, let's think about any other nodes to go and set up their structure and having them to send the data. It's it's an opportunity that takes it, it is a thing that takes around months and months to just give get everybody on board in this scenario. Okay, it's not just a one day thing. Like um, we I think uh, they were testing with one of the states. It is just coming up and sharing the data with with all these norms that we have on these uh, on the blockchain network uh, for them to go and open up the network. There was a huge amount of cost savings which. One, uh, 25 million is just for the basic versions to just onboard this set of data. Um, and getting that data from the states, thinking about it from the perspective of work that needs to be achieved is phenomenal, actually. It's not like, it's not a one, one day job though. Uh, whereas that reduced the effort of this by around, I think I have the slide for that, but it reduced the effort by like so much a time that we, that we created and to help them it helped them scale up very fast actually. So the scaling perspective, the perspective of how we introduced all of these things in the network, saved them, which was very cost efficient and uh, uh, very process oriented, which took, which reduced their time and which indirectly met their, um, which indirectly met their uh, budgets actually. So that's that's the key, pro key part which we, which we looked at. And it's easy for, uh, easy to set up this network when you're communicating with the different organizations, either in the state or in the private sector, uh, or from the government sector. It's it is the def definitely a best technology which you can use for you know, trust and cost savings and all the other other benefits that are provided for your supply chain. If you have any supply chain, that is for sure. Though, so I worked in the past with a few production use cases. I one one of the big uh, uh, cases where uh, talk, talking about the shipments and everything, 
that say um, the, the people in those uh, in that use case the main company was losing around uh, 600 million basically in even based on the invoicing disputes and late payments etc this is a huge multinational so just we will not worry about the name but it is they literally doing doing at least the pilot today definitely figured out the cost saving which was a cost saving which was reduced to at least like uh, fivefold actually so that's that's one of the key benefits too and the technology provided them all the cap all the features um with what they need though but the key com the, the main thing is you need to make sure your use case fits into this um this this model where your partners agree upon what you're looking at that is the uh, and, that, and that is the thing that you need to focus on, on mainly on the business the technology is all there it's just a matter of how you going to work collaboratively is the key part and uh, expecting a tram uh, expecting an immediate return probably in a day or two or a month is not the thing that you're looking for here that's because your engineering is going through the process and you're setting up for uh, for a long time which you're looking at in this case Hey, so this is Tom Plunkett. Just to add on to Bala's comments there, I mean, keep in mind what Bala has presented to us. Uh, we basically took this project and went from a demo into production in four months. Yeah. Um, and the only way we could accomplish that is using blockchain in the cloud environment. Um, if we were not working with cloud computing, we still wouldn't be in production today, a year later. So just keep that in mind that yep. cloud computing really accelerates how fast you can take a government, uh, you know, project into production. I mean, we all know of those of us who work with the government, we all know of projects that have spent five years or more before they went into production. And this project, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were able to bring it into production in four months, which really couldn't have been done without cloud computing. Yep. That's amazing. That's Incredible. Hey, Bola, this is Jeff. Um, now, just uh, need to kind of make sure I understand this. You're an HHS employee, correct? No, no, I'm not. I'm an Oracle employee. So. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure that uh, but all of our team who is here, like Tom, who talked, Jindy, who talked uh, in the beginning, they are all um, uh, and um, they 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 all work with HHS in Washington. We're all okay. Oracle. Tom and Jindy, I'm Jindy. Tom's Oracle. Paula's Oracle. It was a big team. Okay, thank we're, you. We're working with HHS. <clears throat> yep. We'll make sure to get you guys the slides. Yeah. Thanks, Jindy. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Paula. Anything this was incredible. Yeah. Uh, so, thank you all for being here. Um, look forward to the slides. Look forward to the recording, which I'm going to go ahead and stop. Yeah.